It's time to step inside the Octagon with your host, Ike Feldman. What's up, combat sports community? It is your boy, Ike Feldman with GiveMeSport.com, being joined by Tough 32 finalist, Ryan Loader. First and foremost, Ryan, how are we doing today? I'm doing amazing. Feeling great. Weight's on point. I'm ready. Excellent. Uh, we were just talking briefly uh, before the interview about the PI. Um, you guys obviously stayed at a house in Vegas. Um, you got familiar with the climate. You obviously succeeding in vegas would you ever think about moving to vegas uh to to train for a camp at least or maybe not full-time but have you ever thought about it um i, th I think i have a really good training camp i where i'm at just mostly nice. the people um i'm from sacramento i'm i'm one of the lucky ones that don't have to really travel i think a lot of fighters have to leave home and go places to to succeed and I, I it's in my backyard so i get family time whenever i want to all my close relatives are close and and uh sacramento is home for me so unbelievable i was literally just there uh i was making a brief stop before 303 the per, uh, Pereira card uh my grandfather is uh out there mi abuelo um have you ever been to crickets crickets what's that uh it's a diner it's like a really awesome diner. Uh, okay. Have you been to the the local Mexican restaurants out there? You guys have some incredible Mexican mm -hmm. food. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mexican California is top notch. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sacramento, a beautiful place, very laid back, uh, very disciplined. Uh, did you come from any uh, military background or law enforcement in your family? No, nope. no law enforcement, no, no military background. Um. I my grandpa was in the navy, so I guess there, there was some, theory, yes. but um, we weren't too close on on that stuff. He never he never talked about it or anything like that. That's typical for the generation. <laughs> uh, now, ironically, Dana White's. Uh, I don't know if you saw the thing. He's like everybody wants to post everything. If you get a cut, everybody's posting everything. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, that generation just keeps it inside. Uh, I need you to not keep this information inside, but how was it working with uh, Valentina? Uh, I heard her on the Rogan podcast a couple of years ago. I learned a couple of things to add to, again, just a small level, but to my training regimen, which is not drink water while you're training, trying to tough through and train everything in one session, you, you know, not do the two or three day, uh, three a day sessions, but train everything in a five hour block. Uh, what did you learn from uh, Queen? Valentina uh she was an amazing coach I was I was really happy I was hoping that uh, I would get her as a coach and yeah she did not disappoint her her striking top notch her coaching staff that she brought in were amazing uh, I feel really close to all of them and she she brought like the people that she trusted in and everyone was it was it was like a family atmosphere even though I was away from all that I know all my training partners and everything uh, she pushed us hard I, I learned a ton. I feel like the other team kind of did what they wanted to do. We had a, a strict training regiment and uh, I, as like a fighting camp, it was amazing. I, I would go back to her fighting camp and, and learn from her. So um, the no water, she, she said it one time and I think everyone just like, okay, this is how it is. And we just agreed with it. Uh, but it, it, the only tough part was it's Vegas. <laughs> So it's really dry. I think I, I lost my voice because there was no water. Plus, where I was, you know, hitting the bags hard and screaming, and then all of a sudden my voice was gone. So a lot of the show I didn't have a voice. But um, yeah, it was it was fun. I it was a very tough tough camp, and I think I got a lot better off of it. So I, I came into a fight camp, and it was win or lose, I was going to get better. And I think that was her her main point. Incredible. What do you plan to do Saturday night? Uh, you you obviously lived and trained um, around the man that you're fighting. Uh, uh, what have you picked up from him while in the house? And uh, uh, is there anything that you can share with us? Um, I I don't really think about the the person I'm fighting as much. You know, I do know him more than I know all the other fighters. But 
that I fought before, but at the end of the day, it's, it's me versus me in the octagon and I'm going to dictate what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, again, we're being joined by at Ryan underscore loader L O D E R. Then what did you learn about yourself? You know, we, we've seen the past uh, season highlights uh, where it kind of looks like uh, things are getting a little psyche out there. Like maybe you guys are just acting out, maybe drinking too much, maybe fighting too much. Uh, <laughs> arguing be, be, too many bees in a jar as i would say but what did you learn about yourself um yeah dana white said it's a pressure cooker and it's a hundred percent i mean they're they're trying to stir up drama they they leave alcohol in there to like <laughs> okay are you gonna slip up or not like i, I don't drink so it's not a, it wasn't a big deal for me um but yeah you're in you're in the most stressful situation without like for me I, like i said i'm from Sacramento I have so many people that I call on all the time if I have any doubts in my head or if I just want to talk and talk some stuff through in the house you're you're kind of talking to the guys you're fighting or might fight so you kind of you, you don't have that um that support system behind you so it was kind of I had to journal a lot I had to really internalize a lot of things and like okay I can I can do this for myself type type stuff um a lot of breath work a lot of meditation um just kind of internalize like okay this is i'm kind of on an island by myself and i i'm going to push through this um i think one of the biggest things is uh, i set off there as i had a goal i'm gonna i'm gonna win the ultimate fighter i'm gonna go through this um this whole process i'm gonna be undefeated and by the end of it, you start doubting yourself because you don't have the the reinforcements from your coaches, from your teammates, from your family, from a, all like I have a a mental coach. I have all these stuff that normally I I talk through stuff with, and they they help me out. And like, no, dude, believe in yourself. You got this. And I didn't have that, so I had to really dig deep into myself and like, hey, wow. no, the reason why you're here is because you you belong here. And sometimes you get that imposter syndrome where you're not. You're like maybe I'm I'm faking this. Maybe like I'm just here because I was part of Team Alpha Male or whatever whatever it might be, and you start doubting yourself and you don't have anyone to kind of get you out of that. So you have to do it yourself. So I think um, breath work and meditation really helped me throughout that process. So um, definitely for this camp, I I've, I've taken a lot of stuff out of that camp because it was you didn't have a phone, you didn't have anyone to talk to you didn't have tv there was no really distractions um you had to cook for yourself which i normally don't do so i'm like okay when i cook for myself this is what i did and i felt great in my camp so it was it was kind of like a process of elimination of all right no no sweets no like there was no extra stuff on top of it so i'm like this is how i'm gonna do my camp now and i, I followed that process through this camp too so it was nice excellent excellent man you are a uh a mind warrior it, it seems like i don't know uh, like super analytical uh very wow um so much to pick apart uh when did you stop drinking um or did you me, drink or did you i i mean I, I always it was like social stuff in college i drank uh, i never drank during season i was a wrestler so season was off limits so it was always like six to eight months of zero drinking for me so it was never never a big deal um when like after season during the summertime we would hang out because you're a college student and you go you go party but as i got older and i, I started focusing in more on my goals it was like this is this it just doesn't line up you know i can't i'm getting older now it feels worse it's just it's hard to um it's hard to train at this level and be who i want to be by putting poison in my body so right uh, i'm actually one of my my main sponsors is a uh, sober living and uh mental health so like it, it just kind of worked out he was a football teammate of mine and he reached out and we just kind of paired up that way and now i'm helping out everybody who, who wants to to change their life for the better and i think i've there's a ton of people that reached out after the show and said, thank you. And, um, kind of gone through some battles with that. And I've maybe pushed them in the right direction to start getting help on that, that front front. So it's been a good. Amazing, man. You are winning me over more and more, not just the Sacramento boy, 
but uh the 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 sober living i mean if anybody needs especially a high level athlete like yourself if anybody needs an example to point to uh conor mcgregor no i'm just kidding um if anybody (laughs) needs an example to point to alex Pereira, I, i think he's I know there's the, the the language barrier, but he's made mention multiple times that he's put down drinking. He was working in a mechanic shop, a shop, and he's just he he turned the corner and and look at him. I'm not saying everybody has to be a, a potential triple champ, but it's like, you know, you could do the things that are going to be there when you wake up more often. You know, you could go to the gym more often. You could be more present in conversations with your family um it, it's yeah i've been on a, a three-year road it's taken a bit coming from a heavy drinking culture you know to kind of like not be the the weird guy and like um i'll show up it, it like just hold a red cup maybe it's soda maybe it's water but like just yeah. try to be around and it, it's taking some time like i think people have like forgotten in circles and i'm like uh, i'm like nope no i'm good they're like they it, but it's it's a process, so I, I respect you. It takes discipline, as David Goggins says. Discipline equals freedom, and you're doing that to equal more freedom, uh, uh, financial freedom. Win on Saturday, bust into the UFC, climb the division ladder, challenge for a belt. Yep, that's the plan. I, I think it's a lot of, like you said, the the, the circles you hang out with my circles don't drink (laughs) so it's everyone's on the same page they're all they're all trying to we're one trying to compete against each other because uh, i i hang out with a bunch of killers that want to compete hard (laughs) and then it's just if that guy's drinking the next day he's gonna get his ass whooped by every single person so it's just it's a it's a tough circle (laughs) but if you if you rise to it then it's it's a great place to be What's the timeline? Have you set a timeline? Do you not pay attention to timelines? Are you looking solely at Valentine this Saturday? Um, do you, do you plan these sort of things? Just uh, uh, fill me in on on how you want to treat the next uh, five minutes or the next five years of your fighting career. Um, I, I take things one step at a time. I, I don't think too far in advance. I think um, when you start doing that, you start having those doubts, the what ifs, the like this is. I have a slight goal, what I want, but it's one fight at a time. And I, I think that's how I, I started the, the U or the MMA. I said, okay, I'll, I'll take one amateur fight. And then after that, it was like, okay, I'll take one pro fight. All right. I'll take another pro fight. And I'm, I'm still here taking the next one. So one, <laughs> one fight at a time. Uh, I don't think about it because you start getting overwhelmed with all this, like, Oh, what if I fight this guy? It's like, I'm not fighting that guy. I'm fighting one guy in the octagon on saturday and then after that i'll maybe fight another guy but i'm not thinking about the next it's it's all about it's all about saturday right now incredible and now uh a couple more lighter things i think we understand uh what you learned about from the show and your goals uh what is a weird fact about at ryan underscore loader weird fact i don't know if i have a weird fact I like to do a lot of outdoor stuff. Like, uh, I don't, I go, that's healthy. uh, Yeah. But (laughs) I I do, uh, here's something weird that I like to do. I like to dive the river for fallen items, I think. (laughs) So the the Sacramento river, there's a bunch of people that go on it and, uh, they drink and party and stuff like that. And then they fall in. So I go on Sundays, it's my day off and I, I have a, scoop mask i have a wetsuit and i dive down and pick up a bunch of oh wow i think you're talking like just like uh like just hold your breath and dive like no joke well, yeah yeah, yeah I, I hold my breath but it's it's deep like it goes 30 feet down on a lot of places and you you're in the river and you kind of have to go through the river and um i think one last sunday i picked up eight phones and probably <laughs> six <laughs> And sometimes I get them back to people, like if they have their contact information, a lot of these new phones work where I've been doing it since high school. So a lot of those phones don't work, but I have a whole bag of just random people's phones that like, I think last time I won, I I gave back, I think five or six of the eight. So we found the the owners and they came and picked them up and it's like, Hey, I found your phone in the bottom of the river. (laughs) Wow. But the glasses, I have a whole box of glasses and uh right right yeah. right it just slides off the 
the slides off they they get drunk or whatever and they slip ball or whatever you know it's fun found a bunch of like speakers and wallets and keys and so it's it's like a little treasure hunt for me and i gotta oh, yeah. work on breath work and yeah it's so that's a weird fact for me <laughs> oh that, that's awesome if they ever if they ever make a water world 2 kevin costner shift <laughs> shift back from westerns back to water movies uh your boy uh ryan loader is ready to be a background or a co-star yeah. um amazing uh what's your favorite hobby outside of punching people in the face I have I mean, that like diving, surfing, wakeboarding, anything that is outside that I can have a little bit of danger with it. It's that's on. I love it. So snowboarding during the winter and the, the normally my Sundays I like to go just get outside and do something, something a little bit dangerous, but still, <laughs> still get out in the outdoors and kind of challenge myself in that way. Nice. Uh I can, I'm going to guess it's Aquaman, but what's your favorite movie? <laughs> favorite movie? It's uh, Dumb and Dumber. That's a. Uh... <laughs> oh, uh, here, would you want a pair of these extra gloves? You had extra gloves this whole time. <laughs> no, he, your hands are freezing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good IOU. You should keep that one. <laughs> um, yeah, people still make references. Amazing. Uh, favorite country to travel to? favorite country man um thailand was amazing and this is before i started fighting so i wasn't even oh, wow. into the muay thai or anything like that I was it was just gonna say yeah no it was i i didn't i i went there because i was coaching um at san francisco state and we had a a, a guy that we put on their their world team because he was he was half thai and um we put him on a, on the world team so we flew over there and he competed for the Thai national team. And I was there for that. And yeah, I went back twice. They, after that, they hired me back on to coach their Southeast Asian um, conference. So I went back again and uh, the food, the people, the, the culture, I just it's not dangerous. Cause everybody's telling me, I'm like, I gotta go at least once. And there's no like stranger danger, stranger danger. Uh, I mean, there's probably places that you go but i was always with people from the country that kind of told me where to go and okay how, how to how to be and I, i've never felt really in danger in, in that one I, i've been to other places that <laughs> felt in danger but yeah thailand was they're they're super nice i i, I really like the thai people so i'll definitely go back to there but yeah i've been to a lot of places and most of the time when i go places it's you you always hear oh it's dangerous it's dangerous and then you get there and you're like what where's this danger that everyone talks about? It's like the right. people like us. <laughs> I was just in the city and my family's out on Long Island. Um, and they're like, Oh, how was Times Square? I was like, uh, Spider-Man and Mickey Mouse were still there. I was like, it's <laughs> a good point. That's a good point. The media, the media is the enemy. The media tells you all this stuff and then you just show up there and you're like, Oh, that's just fear mongering. And yes. people trying to like get clicks on their stuff and yes. trying to be like, hey, I, you're afraid of this. It's like, there are people <laughs> it's the wizard of oz it's it's the guy behind the curtain that's pulling the strings and it's literally like stabbings here stabbings here. if you listen to the news you would never leave your house it's like uh, yeah. yeah all right you get it my man. it was amazing um being one of the one of the two americans on the international season uh the ultimate fighter it's like these guys are from around the world and we have this almost the same like everyone trains about the same we have the same mindset there's little differences and things but we're all doing pretty much the same thing like we all knew how to like uh, um one well, of the guys really close to you we're team circumcised remember that <laughs> <laughs> one of the guys i got close to was from dagestan and you'd think like oh dagestan russia they're tough they're rough and like i learned so much from him and um yeah it was it was a great experience that I, I learned a ton of from everyone on the show which is cool it's amazing uh like I, I grew up in a bubble and it's like uh thank god I married a European wife and uh, like it, <laughs> this sounds so stupid but I've like learned geography through the MMA stuff like I'm like oh oh, oh Dagestan oh oceanic never knew that oh like, <laughs> like learning about it it's like that's the beauty of the sport I believe it will be 
at bare minimum, the second biggest sport in the world behind soccer or football. Mm -hmm. It's just because it brings so many nations together. As Dana White has said, it is in our DNA. I don't know why it's not on the Olympics. I don't know why jujitsu or submission grappling is not on the Olympics. It's something weird's going on there. We have break dancing with like kite flying. Uh, we're going to have like hopscotch and it's like, we don't have jujitsu or submission grappling or MMA, like put the headgear on shin guards. Like it's for amateurs, make it cool. But yeah, I really appreciate what fighting does to all of us and how it brings us together in a weird way and how the ultimate fighter brings us together. Ultimate fighter 32 final this Saturday, ESPN plus Ryan loader at Ryan underscore loader. Sacramento native team Apple mill uh, alpha mill. Let's go. My man, Ryan, appreciate your time and good luck Saturday. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Have a good one. Safe travels. Did you hydrate? Good. Get ready for another round inside the Octagon. What's up fight fans. What's up combat sports community. It is your boy, Ike Feldman for giving me sport.com being joined by Robert Valentin at robzilla.mma on Instagram. First and foremost, how are we doing, Rob? I'm doing very good. Feeling good. Uh, it's been a busy day. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure you're, you're getting a taste of being uh, in the UFC, man, uh, doing 50 million interviews and say, answering the same thing over and over, right? <laughs> Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so let me uh, change it up. What is your shoe size? What type of pants do you like? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't matter. You know, I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind answering uh, the, the same questions because I think the, the man, the, 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 it, there's a reason why those are the most asked questions and the fans deserve answers and there are different platforms. So different people watching. So, you know, um it is what it is you know it is what it is it is the game. it is what it is to quote the great max holloway who is very calm and nice outside of the cage but is an absolute demon as we saw at ufc 300 ironically i, I see a similar traits with you you know very cordial very friendly but you are a blood thirsty warrior and this saturday ufc on espn 62 against ryan loader you get to unleash that animal for many fighters that i know or, or interview as well very calm people but it, it's it's almost like an expression on fight night is that the same for you that uh maybe you don't drink uh, don't party don't smoke don't do anything crazy in life but this this cage fight is where you can truly express your inner soul i wouldn't say uh, i'm not drinking not smoking not doing anything <laughs> i live life also you know but um if i would if i would let out the rubber well, that training camp you're not drinking right no way say what training camp no drinking right no, no, no. I, anyways, like drinking for me means maybe like once, twice a year I, I get drunk at a party. Oh, that's not bad. But yeah, I'm not, I smoke weed maybe uh, once a month or something like that. But if I would let out the rubber that is inside here on a daily basis, I'd be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So being in a cage gives me opportunity to do what I love to do. And actually getting paid for it instead of, you know, and uh, it's like a therapy, you know, it's like a therapy. I feel like the whole world is always um, suppressing my, my real energy, you know, this violent energy. It's like, no, don't do this. No, not here. You know, it's true. So, it's true. Every, every walk of life, uh, you know, Eddie Bravo, the great jujitsu mind. Sure, sure. Uh, Eddie says that um, like school and the way that it's constructed is to just make you a future in an office, sit down for eight hours, yeah. 10 yeah. hours, and just be uh, complacent, listen to authority. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I was just talking to my wife about that because we have a, a very hyper uh, three-year-old son. And I know the system is going to try to break him like Should a try horse. To break him. Yes. Yeah. And I think uh, we're so stupid. We're so young as people. Like, 
adults should have a gym in an office or like one hour a day like but I, i'm so glad that you have found your passion uh when when yeah. did you start training and how did mixed martial arts come into your life so i i, I can relate to your son now huh? because i was a, a kid hyper hyper as fuck <laughs> and um i would on a daily day, on a daily basis, I would go in the woods and outside and play warrior, fight against my neighbors. Soon, <laughs> soon nobody wanted to play with me anymore because I would always want to fight. That's that was my playing. Right, right, Going right. out to play for me means fighting, you know. And um, so I would also grow up with older brother, always, always fighting, always fighting, and um, <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of how I grew up. And then I started judo at a very young age. And from the first day, I was competitive as fuck. I wanted to go in there and hurt people, you know. And I was I was actually very fortunate to get a, a, a sensei who was like a tough motherfucker. And he wanted to breed some, some good judo athletes, you know. And um, there was no... There was no pampering you know what i mean and um that that fit me and that shaped also my my athletic career for the future yeah for for me obviously on a completely different level than yourself and uh other ufc fighters but after i train or work out i feel center i could think uh as soon as you put on the kimono or the gi uh, for judo, was it like, oh my god, I I have to find a way to keep doing this? Yes, I I fell in love on the first day. I fell in love on the first day, and for me, it was um, also the community. Not only the not only the training, but the community, because I had all of a sudden I had friends around me who were also, um. Like they also had this kind of energy in them. Hey, let's fight. Let's, you know, let's uh, fight each other. And 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 because other other people they were too soft for that. You know, other kids, and I would just get in trouble when I started fighting them. And there it was like a bunch of young boys with too much energy, learning how to fight and on a daily basis, uh, throwing each other around and submitting each other and. Uh, training so the community maybe was was the the biggest factor that that kept me uh like so hyped for it and then obviously the competition that was my favorite part of the week like we would ha almost have every saturday a competition nice and that was i i, I love to perform when it's about something you know like in the in the gym in the sparring and stuff it's fun, yeah. It's it's like playing, but when it's competing, that's when I'm like my favorite aspect of the game, you know. Hmm. I'm I'm thinking. Uh, are you? Do you like? Do you perform better than your brothers in, in groups of people? Uh, were you just because there's they always say the gym athlete, you know, like mm -hmm. the, there's so many champions in the gym, but under yeah. the bright lights, they they just. Maybe they're thinking too much. Uh, what what makes yeah. you so special when the cage door closes? I think what makes me so special is that I'm actually enjoying it and looking forward for it. There are so many, there are so many fighters that they fight maybe because they're good at it, and right. they see it as a way of um, reaching goals in life. But the actual confrontation with another trained human being that tries to rip their head off gives them kind of uncomfortable feeling, you know? And I saw that with, with many athletes that fight professionally. When they would talk to me before the fight, and I remember there was one guy I looked up to like crazy. And then the first time I cornered him and I saw him in fight week, I was like, what? He's actually not enjoying this. Right. For me, it's the best fucking fight week. I wake up with a fucking smile on my face. Today, uh, uh, media day, Apex, 
and I walk around and it's just a kid in the candy shop, you know? I fucking love it. And that's on, up until the fight. You won't see it on my face probably because I'm focused when I'm getting in there. But like fight day waking up, I'm like, let's fucking go. But, and Yeah, I, I imagine even if you're serious yeah. in there, it just means that your focus, like the, the world stops. Everything exactly. stops. Yes. And you're Good. you're in Literally the moment. Stops. That, that's, yeah. that's beautiful, man. There's a, fa there's a famous quote from um, the Gracie guy. The, the pioneer of, of UFC, what was his name? Hoist. Hoist Gracie. He said, when I fight, I'm not thinking about going home for dinner. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of how I feel. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing else in my mind. It's true. Seeing someone after or doing something after or whatever. No, it's the fight. That's if I have I to, I, I die in there, you know. Mark Zuckerberg, uh, he said he started training because you can't think of your schedule. You can't think of dinner when somebody's trying to choke you, when somebody's yeah. kicking you, punching you in the face. You can't think of that. And no. that's why I think, oh, man, I, I love martial arts. I, I really do. I think for anybody who's hyper, anybody like my wife, she's a Shotokan black belt. Like it's we're, we're hyper people, very excited. And it's like. I think I think people are starting it's less it used to be I don't know not scary it used to be just people didn't want to talk about it that fighting can be good fighting can be good and uh, I I feel like people like you you carry that beautiful message like you said like if you weren't fighting you would probably be on the news for the wrong reasons <laughs> yeah yeah but uh my my, my last uh formal question you do have the fight coming up, UFC on sixty, uh, UFC on ESPN sixty-two this Saturday, ESPN Plus, Tough Thirty-two finale. Ryan Loader, he's a California kid, wrestler, very humble, modest, and it seems like there's going to be respect there. Which, in my opinion, whenever there's ultimate respect, like a Yuri and a Prajeda, it just results in blood. How do you see this fight going down? Exactly like that. I see two guys in there. Who are not coming to joke around who have who are on a mission who who are confident in themselves and who also know what's on the line now you know so um if it's ryan with his style that he just want to grind it out and make it his pace or if it's me who wants to to, to hurt his opponent it's going to be a clash of two people who who just want to press their will on the opponent and i think that's a great matchup and i know that he's coming prepared and i'm coming prepared so i think we have everything it needs for an epic tough finale and one thing that i bring to the cage is i'm not gonna let him make this a boring fight I'm going to make it bloody and I'm going to make it violent. And if I had go out, I go out on the shield, but I will try to take his head off in there. Literally take his head off. I literally just got goosebumps of the back of my shaved head. <laughs> Amazing, Rob. Check out his merch on Instagram. He's rocking it right now. I love it. I got to see that movie with uh, Alex Skarsgård and William Defoe. I believe there's a Viking family. That movie is about you, my man. You have Viking <laughs> blood at robzilla.mma. Team Grasso versus Ryan, ba uh, Ryan Loader. This Saturday, UFC on ESPN 62, tough 32 finale. My man, Rob Valentin, I appreciate the time. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Did you hydrate? Good. Get ready for another round inside the Octagon. What's up, fight fans? Ike Feldman with GiveMeSport.com. Being joined by probably the top five greatest nicknames of all time. Genghis Gone Offley, at Genghis Gone Offley on Instagram. Uh, we know the, the Ryan Darth Vader. Uh, Stylebender is obviously pretty cool. Uh, the Spider is pretty cool. 
but Genghis gone awfully. You, my friend, are already in the Hall of Fame for your nickname. How is everything going? <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, I'm going great, bro. Right. Well, it's been... Uh, I just heard in an interview from the media day that there was no phone. And I don't. of course, there would be no phone. I don't know why I didn't just think of it. But man, in this generation, in 2024, uh, how is that going about? Was it, is it five or six weeks? Yeah, it was, it, was six, it was six weeks, but five weeks total in the house uh, with no phone. And look, I tell you what, that experience in, an, in its own was really nice because really? It, was, it was a bit of a digital detox. Uh, <laughs> I, I felt very strange having my phone uh, back with me. I almost didn't want to use it. I didn't want to play with my phone. And I even remember my, my wife was like, why aren't you messaging me? I'm like, it's not because I don't want to talk to you. It's because... I just don't want to use this phone. I've kind of gotten used to it, you know, but um, yeah, that, that was a nice experience. I, I don't think I'll be able to experience that one again. What did you learn about yourself uh, without a phone or without distracting you? Uh, mm. I, I've, I've found out like from cutting out alcohol, it's like whenever you have a bad day, you're like, oh, uh, uh, I need a drink. Oh, uh, uh, I need a smoke. But it's like without that, it makes you kind of face what you're dealing with. Uh, what did you, I, I feel like a phone might be harder than no alcohol or no smoke. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how was that experience? What did you learn? It, about it was, it was harder. Uh, you know, I, I've never written in a journal before ever owned one, but uh, I took one with me with no intention of writing a single thing in it. But uh, I think, and it took me about two weeks to start actually writing things in it. And, you know, not having the phone on me, it just simply made me have the time to internalize, you know, go inside. If I was feeling a certain way, you know, I, I guess I just had to talk to myself, you know, and figure out why I was feeling certain things. Or um, when it came to thinking and planning, I, that's when I started writing in my journal and, you know, either fight related or non-fight related, you know, I wrote so many nice things that I wanted to do after, after fighting or after I wanted to get out of the house. And, you know, it, it really helped my quality of life, you know, and even relationships and how I, you know, just relationships with anyone in general, you know, I, I just wanted to, I've always been the type to better myself, you know, so not having my phone and being able to do that gave me the chance to really zone into it. Incredible. And a lot of people, Man, it's like they're trying to tear down the ultimate fighter. I am, uh, maybe I'm just the, the 1%, the hardcore fans who tune into every season, super excited when Brian Battle and Ricky uh, uh, Tercios brought it back uh, a couple of years ago, was right, right after the pandemic, and uh, just super locked in. There's uh, Dana White was just asked about it. There, he has looking for a fight, he has Dana White contender series, and of course, the ultimate fighter in my mind. And people are forgetting this, but back in the day with Forrest Griffin, Michael Bisbing, Nate Diaz, Chris Lieben, everybody said it was the toughest tournament in all of sports. Tougher than the Pride, tougher than the Valley Tudo, the, the two fights in one night, because you're living with the quote-unquote enemy, uh, the opponent, like yeah. sleeping next yeah. to them. Like it, that, yeah. that, People talk about so much the mental. That's why it's the hardest, because the mental trip. Do you know why Contender Series, eight-week camp, Bing, bong, boom, in Vegas, fight, go back. You, you're yeah. living, you're living and breathing it every day. Um, yeah. Is that true to fact? Like, it, it, did you? It, it, it is true. There, there was a few, you know, like, let's put it this way. MMA is the hardest sport there is out there, period. Yes. yes. Uh, fighting in a tournament format is even harder. And then you've got living with your opponents and no phone and all this stuff. You can't go anywhere. It's even harder, you know? So, uh, and I think like maybe people aren't thinking about that side of it, you know, the, the competitive side, the things that you have to go through to, to become the ultimate fighter. And, you know, the sport is evolving. The sport is changing. So yes, it's a reality TV show. So maybe people are expecting more fights to happen or more drama to happen or, you know, some crazy shit, but, as the sport is evolving, we are professionals. We are evolving as martial artists. And to be the best athlete there is out there, yeah, you can't be drinking. 
You can't be smoking. You can't be fucking around. You know, you can't be doing dumb shit if you want to be the best in the world, you know? So uh, I think there's a little bit of that, but um, yeah, I loved it, man. It was awesome. I 100% agree. Uh, uh, the Patty Pimlet is almost like a, a, a fossil at this point, the, the crash dieting and everything. George St. Pierre was almost an alien, no pun intended. I know he talks about aliens, but he, he was from the future in, in terms of living that martial arts lifestyle, not just training six months of the year, fighting six months, uh, like just, just always getting better over, always evolving. And you've come up in that generation. Uh, who for you, uh, did you like to watch as a teenager or a, as a child, uh, that maybe pushed you to try a new technique in the gym? Bro, it was, uh, it was GSP, you know, that was the guy that I looked up to because, early on i could say i could see that this guy is like a, a universal soldier uh he could do everything you know and he can adapt and you know my father did actually name me uh, after Genghis khan and and so i as i got older i kind of was studying it and looking into it a little bit more and realizing that he was such a good conqueror and, and not because he was powerful he actually didn't have much to his name and he actually went through a, very, a lot of adversity in his younger life but it was his, uh, you know, his analytics, his tactical side that actually made him who he was. So when I looked for a fighter, GSP was the only one that could adapt to any situation and he was very tactical. So he was my favorite guy growing up. And then later on, it was Khabib. And that was because of his dominance, nice. you know, just how dominant you can be, you know, like forget the skill, forget how it looks, just dominate your fucking opponents, bro, you know. So them two... Uh, are the guys that I look up to uh, as 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 figures and um, yeah, it's excellent. And I, I feel like you would agree with me that it's uh, it's important. I, I come from growing up watching baseball, playing baseball. Uh, the uh, yeah, only one guy has slipped past, but everybody else who did steroids is not in the baseball hall of fame. And I remind everybody in the mixed martial arts world that it's it's worse than baseball to do steroids and fighting. You're not just hitting a ball 50 feet over the fence. You're punching somebody's face and their skull. Yes. And, and if you have more energy in the 24th minute or in the 14th minute, that's dangerous. That's that's yeah. what I heard a great breakdown about the the EPO effects that, yeah, uh, OK, maybe you're not strong, but you got more energy for longer and there is danger in that so I, I feel like we would agree that gsp and khabib and hoist gracie amanda nunez ronda rousey everybody who did it the right way they 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 should be elevated i love anderson silva i'm looking at a poster right now where he's kicking vitor in the face but i'm sorry man it's like the the steroids is, is a bad look but i feel like you uh, can carry the torch for the good guys, the superheroes, the Marvel Avengers. Uh, what are some of the goals that you have in the sport? Uh, the goals that I have in the sport is obviously becoming a UFC world champion. You know, that's that's one. You know, I'm not here to, you know, as Connor says, take part. We're here to take over and do the best that I can um, in my life. The other thing is I want to inspire a lot of people that are going through any type of hardships and adversities in their life, especially, you know, there's like not no real age connected to it, young, old, you know, it doesn't matter because, you know, of the life that I've lived, I, I want to, you know, motivate people and inspire people in, in that sense. The other thing that I, that I really want to do is, uh, you know, I'm an, I'm an Aussie, I'm born in Australia, Melbourne boy from the suburbs, but my, my blood is Turkish, you know, and, Turkey is a huge population of over 200 million people, Turkic people, and I, I, I see that there's a gap in their development. So sometime in my life, I actually want to be able to develop the Turkish MMA and the young athletes over there. Uh, my phone is currently blowing up right now with young boys messaging me and so like inspired and wanting to learn MMA, but they don't have the the knowledge. So I want to somehow work with some people in Turkey. I want to somehow maybe bring my coaches and, and create like a training development plan and really help the nation of the Turkic people to possibly be, you know, and, and, and have some amazing fighters come out of there as well. Would you 
move, pick up and live there if there was a UFC PI? Look, I well, if there was a PI, you know, I'd, I'd be involved in the PI. But yeah. um, I, I'm a universal guy. You know, I like to travel. I don't really like to ever sit put in one place. Um, my whole life, I've kind of been moving around for different reasons. But uh, you know, yeah, I, I definitely spend some time there. And um, but I don't, I don't know, yeah, about living there. We'll see. And uh, I can't get enough Turkish coffee. And uh, baklava is that yes. correct? Oh my yes. gosh! The, Do you, does uh, somebody in your family make an excellent baklava? This is the one thing that I don't like about the Turkish culture, and <laughs> well, that is me healthy. putting on ten kilos <laughs> yeah. every time. Like I've been to Turkey three times now, and I came back obese after three days. I was like, God damn, it's too good. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And I, of course, do my spin on it. I warm up the baklava and then put like uh, ice cream, like vanilla ice cream. Like yeah. Yeah. I can Compost. feel it in my teeth right now. Just thinking about it. <laughs> well, last thing, I appreciate your time. And you said Genghis, not Genghis, yes. right? So okay. uh, look, man, we could, there's, there's a lot of different terminologies. The Turks will say Genghis. Uh, the Aussies will say Genghis. Um, you know, the true Mongolians will say chinkies, you know, so, you know, it, it's however you want to say, it, but I think everyone understands you know, however way you say it. Well, on Instagram at Jengis, K-A-A-N-O-F-L-I. On Instagram, Genghis Khan Offley. Team Valentina, I'm just going to hold you for one more question. Your prediction this Saturday, UFC. On Team, Gra Team Grasso, by the way, not Valentina. Oh. What am I smoking? <laughs> team Grasso against Team Valentina. Shout outs to Mexican Pride. Can't wait to see it. UFC Noche Grasso. Um, it's 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 amazing that I, I appreciate the UFC giving uh, as Dana White said a love letter to Mexican combat sports. But it is. before we get there, this Saturday, August twenty fourth, ESPN Plus Ultimate Fighter thirty two finale, Myron Santos stands in front of you from your dream how do you get past him i get past him by finishing him and dominating him all right that was fast folks um you Thank heard you. it <laughs> amazing short Thank sweet i can't wait to see you do your big things especially this saturday con awfully i appreciate the time safe travels and have fun my brother thank you brother appreciate it let's go did you hydrate good Get ready for another round inside the Octagon. What's up, everybody? What's up, combat sports community? It's your boy, Ike Feldman, again, with another Ultimate Fighter 32 finalist. Again, they're fighting UFC on ESPN 62 this Saturday, ESPN Plus. Being joined by Khan Offley's opponent, Myron Santos, on Instagram, at Myron dot Santos underscore. First and foremost, Mr. Myron, how are we doing today? Good, good, very good. Uh, just had a good sleep and everything's good. Excellent. Uh, as we were saying before, sleep is the most important thing. And God bless you, my friend. You said you have a little kid on the way. Uh, sleep as much as you can now. You may not sleep for 18 years. <laughs> I will try. I'll try. <laughs> now you scare me, but I'll try. It's it's it, everything happens at the perfect time. Uh, they yeah. say God's timing. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, talk to me why you're gonna win this fight. Why you're going to be inspired because you have uh, a baby uh, Santos on the way. It's my dream since I was young. When I started to train at 14 years old. I always visualize this moment of me making my debut. And now, not just the debut, but I can debut with a title, being the ultimate fighter. And nothing can stop me. I think I'm hungrier than him and I'm gonna get this win for sure. Incredible. And, uh, I always say people should train with hate and fight with love. It seems like you train with love, fight with love. You're you're very, I don't know, very like, 
not soft, but you're very kind hearted person uh, just from your social media and, and from what I've seen in the, the pictures from the show, you seem like you have a, a big heart. Is, is that true? Yes. Yes. I'm very calm. Um, I don't let anything stress me out. You know, I, I'm a guy like you can say soft. I think I'm soft. <laughs> Uh yeah, so fighting isn't a thing that I do like to unleash my hate or mm -hmm. my free like a lot of fighters do. Mm -hmm. When I'm fighting, it's a different feeling, like I'm really enjoying it, I'm loving it what I'm doing at the moment. So yeah, love training, love fighting, love everything. Is that like the Anderson Silva? um silva always said play he says just play 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 make it fun is that the same for you yes like every time i'm going to a fight i'm thinking i can't lose this is for my family all that stuff but when i'm fighting i'm just enjoying the moment like i'm really playing and it's always it's always a good moment it's uh i don't have like any stress when I'm fighting, I'm just enjoying every single second of it. And yeah, I'm playing. You need to run to, for president in America. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine yeah. if you give a speech, you're like, Ooh, hello, America, everybody. <laughs> one day. <laughs> I'm you're, you're very relaxed, man. You're very relaxed. and I can feel that. And yeah, it's true. A lot of people, they, they fight for their father. They fight for their family, for their country with a, a, a lot of anger. And maybe that puts a, a lot of pressure on you. I believe that uh, uh, fighting loose and, and being relaxed can actually give you more cardio. You're less, less, less uh, tight, less loose. I was watching your Instagram, studying your Instagram. You look so relaxed. Like you're just, I, I watched the, the Muay Thai fight and obviously amazing technique beautiful kicks like alex yeah. pajeda like throwing the kick up from the bottom just no effort beautiful but you're relaxed more than anything manny pacquiao he has said um a fast punch is a is a relaxed punch or a fast muscle is a relaxed muscle uh, is that the same with you yeah i think like scientifically that's true really but also, yeah, like when you're all tight, when you're stressed, you get tired fast. But also, like where I'm at, like in my mental state at the moment, uh, I'm I'm enjoying it so much that I can't be stressed. Like sometimes in my first fight in the house, I was a little bit stressed in the first round, and they said to me, "Hey, calm down." And after that, like, I won every single exchange. I didn't rush. I didn't lose a position. So I think calm is the key for the for winning, for success, for everything. Were people surprised, your family or your friends or your neighborhood, when you start fighting? They're like, Myron wants to fight? Like, he's, so, he's such a relaxed man. Like, was everybody surprised when you were a teenager? Uh, no, because I always liked uh, sports like soccer, even like judo. Like I would do, I would try to do everything. I would be like a kid that wouldn't stop. So they weren't surprised. And I started compete like when I was 13 or 14. So they are really used to it. But yeah, a lot of people say that like, how can you be this calm when you're fighting? And I think, uh, like, competing since I was young helped me a lot, too. But they are not surprised. Like, some of them say, hey, that's not the same guy that is fighting. And I say, no, yes, it is. <laughs> calm, close, but yeah, that, that's how they react. I love it. Again, we're being joined by at Myron dot santos underscore on instagram catch him this saturday espn plus ufc on espn 62 the ultimate fighter finale 32 
man, it's here. It's a big fight. I just spoke with Genghis Khan awfully. He's excited, man. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be fighting relaxed. I think he is. He's going to have a fire under his ass. Um, uh, I don't think so. How how uh how do you see this fight playing out? Man, I see him maybe in the beginning. Like we are fresh, we are strong. So maybe he'll be able to press me against the cage a little bit. But I think after the half of the round, I'm going to complete dominate him because he'll try to take me down for sure. If not, it's going to be a bad night for him because I really believe that I'm the best striker. So I think he will try to like just press me against the cage all around and win a boring decision, but I'm not going to let this happen. And I, I truly believe that that I'm going to win this fight by finish. Excellent. And I expect you to see some body work. I was studying your Instagram. You have beautiful head movement. Um, uh, MMA, it, it's getting better and better uh, with the boxing. And it's like, I, I think you're uh, coming into the UFC with elite striking. So it's going to be amazing to see how far you can take it. Um, what are some of your goals in the next year, five years, 10 years? Do you want to open a gym when you're 45, when you're 50? Uh, if if you don't mind, uh, what are some of your goals? Yeah, so I have a lot of goals. I think, first of all, I want to bring my mom to live with me here. See if she likes. If she, If she doesn't like, okay, but she will get to like visit when she wants yeah and i also want to have a gym one day i don't know when i, I want to be a coach one day i think it's a pretty cool job and i, I want to work with fighting like being a coach being a manager whatever I, that's my dream i want to stay in the gym have contact with the guys always always be in touch with the mixed martial arts work and yeah, my goals right now, yeah, that that's my goals right now. And have a healthy baby, and I I can't wait. Take care of my family. That that's it. It's the best thing in the world. It, it's literally I I I was a young boy before having kid, and now I'm a man. It's like it changes everything. It changes. It makes you smarter too. You have to start to play the chess. Like you're like, oh, get the bottle, get the diaper, get the sleep, get the is. It's amazing. And uh, before we get there, before we get to the winter with the baby and the blessing, big fight this Saturday, Khan Offley UFC on ESPN 62. Very excited for you. Is there anybody you want to give a shout out to? Um, big shout out to my mom, to my wife, my base. I love them, and we'll get this this done together. Let's go. My man, Myron Santos, I appreciate the time. Good luck, safe travels, and have fun. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thank you.